Hi everyone! Today we're talking about the effects of micromanagement on your team. Actions for leaders to avoid micromanaging. Four essential communication skills for managers and leaders. And finally, four performance management conversation to master. The fastest way to lose talent is to micromanage it. Leading isn't about being right, it's about setting the conditions for right to happen. And according to the State of the American Workplace Report, 60% of employees don't believe they have the opportunity to do what they do best every day at work. Working remotely is the new normal for many of us. And managers, directors, or leaders who sense a lack of control due to their lack of employee interaction may micromanage their teams leading to reduced engagement, poor motivation, and low productivity. Ask if you're falling short. Your boss's excessive involvement in your job could be a form of hidden feedback. And ask if there's something about the way you are performing the role that they find inadequate. And if they get into reassuring mode, telling you they think you're doing a great job, this opens the door for you to share an example of why you're asking. And on the other hand, if your boss indicates that he is disappointed in your performance, then address that. Let them know that you want to excel in your job. Ask your boss to consider offering you feedback and coaching when your work doesn't meet expectations rather than jumping in and doing it for you. Don't wait. Letting toxic resentment accumulate could be dangerous. And the longer you wait, the more you're likely to start ascribing motives to your boss. Schedule a meeting with your boss and explain that you've noticed their level of involvement. Then, positively note that having greater trust in your capabilities will enable you to achieve even better results. Ask how you can together deepen the trust and independence. Does your bus need more frequent updates? Do you need to better show your abilities? Talk it through, collaborate on a plan together. According to Ken Blanchard, four most important skills for each party play a key role and the latest foundation for a healthy and productive feedback mechanism between you and your boss. And how about the actions for leaders to avoid micromanaging? Hire talented people of high character. Because the building block for the foundation of autonomy is trust. Besides, you can choose trustworthy employees over skilled ones if you had to choose between the two. Remember, you hire your team members for the attitude and skills can always be thought down the road. And you must clarify goals and objectives. Autonomy culture is built on priorities, clearly defined objectives, communicated time period for completion, and measurable and reasonable target. Each team member can score differently at various paces, but their individual goals and the overall team goal should be clear from the beginning. Set the goals, time frame, and measurement, then you'll be amazed what your team can achieve as a whole and also individually. Training process and procedure are equally important. In order to build confidence, you need to train your team on the skills required for the current and future goals. So each team member can make the correct decision and take responsibility when the time comes. Retaining an existing skill employee is much more cost effective and productive than bringing and hiring a new employee. Even if they're more skilled on paper, it would take months until they learn your organization, your category, your brand, and deliver meaningful results. And you better empower your people. Remember, good leaders empower their team members to take more responsibility, have more decision authority, and carry more load. It doesn't mean you're letting go and sharing the credit with someone else. It's actually meaning that your team's outcome can grow, your team members can thrive and improve, Overall, both deliverables and the talent equity grow simultaneously. Delivering KPIs only is not an indication of good leadership. Building effective teams, growing the talent pool, presenting new leaders to the organization, and then delivering the objectives make you a really good leader overall. So let's make sure we talk about the four essential communication skills for managers and leaders too. Listen to learn. A deeper type of listening where the goal for the manager is to hear something that might change their mind, not just prominent response. And inquire for insight. When the manager uses questions to draw people out and probe for understanding that might not be shared at the first place. And tell your truth. Being direct in communication in a way that promotes honest observation without assigning blame. And finally, express confidence. Conveying a positive attitude toward the other person and toward future conversations regardless of the subject. And finally, 
Which four performance management conversations should you master? The goal setting conversation. So make sure you set clear objectives. Don't forget that the good performance begins with clear goals. And second, the present conversation. Good leaders are instinctively good at noticing and recognizing progress and good performance. So catch people doing things right. And number three, the redirecting conversation. Are you providing feedback and direction when performance is off track? You need to seize the opportunity before the problem escalates. And number four, the wrapping up conversation. You can conduct a short informal review after a task or goal is finished and also savor accomplishments and acknowledge learnings. I hope you're not being micromanaged in your organization. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.